What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here with another Tottenham update video. Today I've got John with me back in the studio. How are you doing, John? Good to be back. It again, is good yeah. to be back, isn't it? Mm, it is good. Yeah, it's like a holiday coming <laughs> in and being productive, so I like it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a whole week. I think, mm. think we've done a video in the studio mm. for the whole week, but we're back now. And let's start off with Eric Dyer and his contract situation. He signed a new contract to 2024 today. And he said um, in a statement, mm. he said after signing that contract, he feels like he's 20 again and he's just joined the club. Well, yeah, thing, it is like the start of a new cycle. And I think the uh, you know, Mourinho style may be suiting his game, you know, mm -hmm. and I think we've seen some good performances from him. He's, he has looked solid, so that's done him a favour with, with the new contract. It's not something that really excites me, if I'm being totally honest with you. But I think with Dai, you know that he's, he's, he's a kind of a player that can um, fill different roles and he's happy to be a team player in the sense that he could sit on the bench, he can come on, do a job at centre-back and holding midfield. So, okay, you know, he's a, I don't want to use the word utility player because I know he doesn't like that. I, I know he doesn't <laughs> but like he's, that. He's but he's a good player for the squad. He's a good, he I want to say that he's a good squad player, yeah. And so that comes in handy when, especially when there's injuries, someone like Dyer can step in. Um, yeah. So and, for that and also, when you look at it, since Jose Mourinho has come, his performances have been getting better. Mm. No matter what anyone says, you know, yeah. I, when you look at Eric Dyer's career in the last couple of years, it's completely gone down the hill. But I think mm. since Jose Mourinho has come, he's given Eric the confidence. Um, I don't mm. think that kind of defensive midfield is his position anymore. I think mm. he's terrible in that position. But I think mm. he is suited to a centre-back role. Yeah. Uh, but when you look at the centre-back, since he's been out suspended, Toby Ardbar and Davidson Sanchez, they've kicked on. Exactly. So Eric Dyer's got a lot of work to do if he wants to solidify that centre-back starting role. But as a squad player, I squad think he's player. brilliant to, to knuckle down. For, for that reason, yeah, it's good. It's a good... Because uh, um, it's a squad game at the end of the day. Exactly, yeah. Um, all right, but let's move on. And apparently Spurs have completed their first signing of the summer and he goes by the name of Alfie Devine and he is a 15-year-old kid <laughs> oh from Wigan. Let's Google him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if Danny Rose was still at the club, he would be yeah. Googling him right now. Uh, we signed mm. him for £500,000 and he's supposed to be one of the hottest talents um, in English mm -hmm. football. Well, it's a good name, isn't it? Divine. <laughs> yeah, Alfie Devine. You've got to be a good footballer after that. <laughs> um, We've signed them off the back end of mm. Wigan with their financial problems. They've mm. gone into liquidation. So mm. it stinks of kind of that Aaron Lennon signing from Leeds uh, when we signed them off kind of well, the back end of money problems. But that what, what has been said about him is that he's thought to be one of the brightest prospects uh, coming mm. out of the country at the moment. And many different Premier League sides, including Man City, were in for him. Mm. And he's supposed to model his kind of style of play on Steven Gerrard, Patrick Vieira in the centre midfield. Look... It's, it's only 15. Be, exactly. yeah, it's exactly. got to be taken with a pinch of salt. Yeah, exactly. It's only 15. Yeah, yeah. But mm. uh, when you look at it, it's good that we're signing up the future of England, like the, the hottest prospects. But we've had that before John Bostock. Yeah, that didn't quite work <laughs> out, did it? And what about the Leeds player? Is he, is, or do you think he's going to get some game time? Oh, Jack Clark. Jack Clark. I mean, he's, gone, he's gone on loan to Leeds and he's mm. gone on loan. He went on loan to QPR as mm. well and none of them worked out really. Yeah, so that could that's the one that's like looks like it might be a bit of a a, a miss. But. but one who seems to be really mm. working out, who mm. we could regret letting go, is that Marcus Edwards. Mm. He is smashing it out in Portugal at the moment. I never understood why we couldn't give him a, give him a go. I was like, please, just give him a go, give him a go. Never got a chance, did he? Never got a chance. So well, Pop be... sold him because his his attitude yeah. wasn't right. Yeah. But it seems that like he seemed to have really turned a corner out in Portugal. Mm. Can we get him back though? Is it well, possible? apparently the deal is that we've got a. Um, a sell-on percentage fee. So right. if we were to sign him back, then we would get some of that money back kind of thing, you know right, what I mean? Okay. But mm. we've got a lot of players in those positions at the moment with mm. Lucas Moura, Stephen Bergwijn, Human Son all really thriving at the moment. Yeah. Are we really going to get Marcus Edwards back? Especially with Mourinho, I'm not sure that I think he would rather stick with the, uh, the, the players that he's got. Mm. But look, um, it's good news that we're signing these kind of players. Mm. Um, but yeah, it remains to be seen if they are going to kick on the, the guy's 15, so it's going to take a lot of time yeah, exactly. for him to like bed into a first team role. But a lot of us has been said about the academy and how we're not bringing through enough players, so signing players like that is, can only do good for our academy. At the yeah, end you'd of the think, day. yeah. Uh, but let's move on and let's talk about Gareth Bale. Mm. And his agent has come out and said that Gareth Bale is perfectly happy to stay at Real Madrid even if he's not going to play for the next two years of his contract. I that just sticks to me, doesn't it? I know, you, I know he's won a load of trophies, but I think he's ruined his career at Real Madrid because 
He's lost the love of football. That is like a Faustian bargain that you make by going to Real Madrid. It's like, yeah, you can go and win all the, everything, but then you, you're sitting on the bench and he's playing golf and he doesn't care about even football anymore. He's lost the love of the game. And for me, that is a Faustian bargain where it's like, that's what you get. And I think if you know, have less trophies, but be at a club where you've still got the passion, you still love the game, you still want to better yourself, mm -hmm. you know, you still part, feel like you're part of a collective where you want to, you know, you're part of it, you've got the camaraderie. He's lost all of that. He's, he's a very, he, he cuts a very disjointed figure there, a lonely figure. And I just think his, his love was lost even three years ago, not even now. Do you still think he's one of the best players in the world? Well, not on the bench, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, if he was actually getting some game time and uh, at a club that actually um, nurtured him, embraced him, loved him, um, worshipped him, if you like, then yeah. Like we did. Like we did. Yeah, he would. He probably would be. But I think... That's, that's the thing that you get when you go to Real Madrid. And, yeah. and you say he's fallen out of love of the game. Mm. I think that's evident for everyone to see. But can you, can you see him falling back in love with the game if he was to join another team? I or can. Do you, or do you reckon that's just it for No, him? I can. I can. I think he needs to come back to the Premiership. Mm. I think, uh, you know, two or three years at Real Madrid would have been good. You know, get the trophies under his belt to know that he's solidified his place in the, in the history books. But then come back and then actually... Where, where the pulse of football is, I think, in the Premiership. Yeah. That's what he needs, that pulse, you know. If he's just too laid back in, in uh, you know, Serie A and La Liga, you know. He, he needs to be at that kind of like gung-ho level football. And um, I, think he, I think he could rekindle some of that passion and some of that fire back. But for me, he has to come back to the Premiership. To and when that. you're talking about the way he's acting and like, you know, mm. he... he it's Real Madrid having their end of season party on the pitch and he's just like standing around on a pitch, not get, not caring. Mm. Uh, every time he's in a picture, he's posing in a golf pose. Yeah. Uh, he's doing monkey business on the uh, mm. on the sideline. I, I don't mean he looks like a monkey, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, look, he's just doing really weird things and it's just not not professional. No. You know, the guy's earning like 600 grand yeah. a week to do these kind of things. It's just so weird. It's almost as if he's... they. They pissed him off and he's doing it out of spite, you know, to get back at the club and to, 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 to kind of like jab at them a little bit. It's all becoming a little bit infantile. But if he wants to earn these kind of wages, these mm. monstrous wages, if he wants to move on, mm. he's not going to get that anywhere else. No, he's, he's stuck. Because of his wages, he's a little bit stuck as well because yeah. no one's really going to buy out his contract, you know. Mm. So he's got two more years of uh, playing golf, <laughs> I guess. All right, well, <laughs> good for you, Gareth Bell. I mean, I really hope he can find the love back to yeah. the game, but... At the moment, it's just hard to see. Uh, but let's mm. move on to Southampton player Pierre-Emil Hoiberg. There's a couple of uh, notes about him. First of all, um, Southampton legend Matt Letizia, and former Spurs fan. I say former because he was at Southampton for too long to, mm. to kind of still consider him a Spurs fan. But he's given a warning to Tottenham and Everton about Hoiberg. And he's said that all the hype around him is not just. And, and he doesn't think he's the player that everyone thinks he is. Mm. And opposed to that, Southampton and the hierarchy of Southampton has said Tottenham are playing games with Southampton and they're not offering the money which they think he's worth. And mm. if they don't up their bid within 48 hours, we're going to lose the chance to sign him. Mm. Um, that stinks yeah. of Levy to me. Yeah, Le I mean, it's Levy back to his old tricks every, Le what every did Le year. Levy put up, to, what, 20 million and they want 35 million or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, that's typical Levy. You know, he's going to fight to the <laughs> fight to the death to, like, cut off some pennies, so... Um, but when you look at it, if we don't sign him this summer for 25 million or 20 million mm. or whatever it is, 35 million, he just goes for free the next summer. Mm. So, I mean, Southampton got, got nothing to gain here. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think they're just playing games. Possibly, but then so does Levy. <laughs> we'll, yeah. leave that, we'll leave that to him because he likes that sort of thing, <laughs> doesn't he? So, mm, uh, yeah. What do you make out of it? Do you think he'll be a good signing for us? Or well, you haven't seen him? I haven't seen enough of him, to be honest with you. Um, I, don't think, I don't think he's... I don't think he's the sort of player that really excites me enormously, you know what I mean? Um, I think he'd do a job, but I, I want to see signings that actually get me excited, you know? I haven't had that for a while. But, but when, when you look at the signings that get you excited, they're mm. usually attacking style yeah. players. We don't mm. really need that. I mean, we've mm. got the wing sort, we've got the striker, maybe a backup striker, but apart from that, I think our attacking personnel is pretty much there. I think mm. we just need to upgrade on the defensive side. But when you look at Pierre Hoiberg, I was speaking to a Southampton fan last mm. week, and he said, this guy's not a good player. Hoiberg is not a good player. Mm. So I said to him, what do you mean he's not a good player? 
and he goes, all he can do is break up play and pass it on. And I said, that's exactly what we need. That's all we need in that middle of the park. Someone who can break up that play and start an attack, pass on and start an attack. You know, give the ball to Gio, mm. give the ball to someone. You know, when we had one Yama in that middle of the park, I know mm. you weren't his mm. biggest fan, but when we had one Yama mm. in that 16, 17 season, he mm. would just break up play, pass on and we would start an attack. That's exactly what we need. Surely. Well, yeah, but I do. I, I think we need someone who can progress the ball in that position. I've always said this, you know. I understand on paper, like you think, a big enforcer type, break up play, give it to the person next to you who's more creative, and they can take the ball. But when I watch games play out, they're often they're often isolated in in, in a position where they're the ones that have to carry the ball, be mm -hmm. the water carriers. And I think yeah. with a Wanyama or a Pierre Hoiberg, if they haven't got that range of passing, it ends up doing that thing that Winks does, where it kind of goes. Court, I'm gonna. I could go that way, but it's, I'm just probably gonna go sideways or backwards because I don't want to take a risk. And I think if you had to put someone who could pro progress the ball better, you can turn defence into attack really, really quickly. And I would, I would really like to see more of a baller in that position. You know, more of a register type, a deep lying playmaker. You know, who can break up play but can also set off the passes quickly. That's for me is what I think we've desperately been missing. Even when we're at our best, like four or five years ago, I always wanted a deep line playmaker in the Wanyama position. Mm. Um, someone like with the passing of Ndombele, you know, but someone who's obviously got the attitude and the work someone rate. Someone who can sprint. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some of, all the things that you need to be a professional footballer. But I would really like to see that type of deep line playmaker in that position who can also break up play but got that, can cut the book, can fizz passes mm. through the lines. I mean, that player, I think, is quite hard to come by, to be honest. Yeah, there's an Alonso, you know, like for Liverpool, the Alonso would be like the, the You're ideal. not asking for much, then. That I'm, asking for, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm asking for the moon on the stick. <laughs> but that, that ideally, that would, be, that would be that kind of player. But there are, they are hard to find, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Hojbjerg would be a good signing. I mm. think it would, it would give the opportunity to let players like Lo Celso, Undombele, and all these players, you know, to play. Mm. Give the chance to play. Just remove the defensive burden from them, kind of thing. Mm. I mean, I know Lo Celso done, done well in that position mm. and he's, he does well in the tackle. He likes to like go in mm. hard. Yeah. So, I mean, he could be that guy potentially. Yeah. Uh, you've said that before. But yeah. anyway, let's move mm. on. Last mm -hmm. but not least, Hyun Min Son Hooray. has swept up uh, all <laughs> the awards at the end of season award, goal of the season, player of the season, uh, mm. young, you know, he, he swept it all. Four awards he's got. Yeah. Um, he's had a good season. Yeah. But when you actually look at it, I think he's just won it more on default than kind yeah, of... Yeah, I think I, it's been a funny season because there's been a lot of injuries in and out and like the lockdown and everything else. It's just like a really just messed up season. But I think on on the strength of it, he is probably, yeah, the, our, our best player of the season. Um, it's been so, he, he, he has had moments where he kind of he drifts in and out of games so he'd have like a, a string of games he'd been alright and then he kind of goes missing for a few games but he would usually produce um, the goods in, within the game he, but even in those games like against Aston Villa and the, like the last minute he'd pop up with that goal he's, even though he kind of was pretty anonymous game, for the game he's, he scored our first goal yeah. He broke his arm while scoring his his, his first goal, <laughs> and then he scored a last minute winner for us. Yeah. So, so there you go. That's what you get with Son. He's got he's got the quality. So you've always got to keep him on for the last minute because you never know what he's going to come up with. He's a little bit like Michael Owen in that regard, mm. if you can remember. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the other players, who else do you think would have been up there for um, player of the season? I think Hugo Lloris definitely gets a shout. Since he came back, we yeah, talked about, I mean, didn't we? Since he came back from his injury, I think he's mm. been absolutely yeah. brilliant. Solid. And and he's stepped it up a level since we've come back from uh, from the break as well. I think he's been absolutely sensational. I yeah. think he showed leadership qualities for the first time ever mm. in a Spurs shirt this yeah. season. And, you know, I think Hugo Lloris deserves a massive shout out. Mm. I think uh, one that you're going to agree with me, Lucas Mora. Yeah. He as well, since since uh, that Sheffield mm. United game, he's flipped the switch. Yeah. Completely flipped the switch. He's well, adding end product to his runs as well. I mean, I said that before. I remember we did a video before. I said he was my third best player of the season and because I thought he's putting in some consistent performances. And since he's been, he's been back, he's been like a real live wire. And, um, you know, he's got that potch energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he's the one that's continuing the potch energy in I mean, terms of closing the ball down. Jose loves him. Just yeah. the, purely because of yeah. the effort and the desire mm. he puts in on the pitch, and now mm. he's adding a bit of quality on the end of it, yeah. which is we've been calling for for since he's come to Spurs, really. Yeah. So what he needs to do it on a consistent level, and he's been doing that the last three, four games. So, mm. and um, do you know who I think that hasn't had enough of a, um, a mention is Toby. Yeah, I mean Toby it's, since he's come back, he's looked mercurial. At the he really His positioning's has. just unbelievable because he he's a bit of a swan because he, he gets into he gets into the right position and he's always there with a the head and a lesser defender would have sort of been out of position been lunging in for a head or a tackle but he's just always there in the right place so it kind of it doesn't look as though he's working that hard you know like a duck's like flapping yeah, yeah. away under the surface <laughs> but you just looks like it's just gliding along 
that's a little bit like Toby. And I think that um, he was a little bit unlucky to lose his place to, to, to Dyer, I think. I know Dyer did okay, he did, did well. Yeah, but since um, since, since he's been, been back, back he, I think Di, um, Toby's like you know he that cemented his place. He's the best centre back at the club. Of course he is. We knew that anyway. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he he would be my shout for and underrated pick. And obviously Gio Lo Celso as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think he's really shown us glimpses of being an elite player um, in the making. All you know, in those games he was elite. You know, um, I think he hasn't continued at all throughout every game, but I definitely think that we've seen enough to know that he's going to be an absolutely top player for us. All right, yeah. well, there you have it. That is the Tottenham update for today. We spoke about Eric Dyer signing a new contract till 2024. We spoke about Alfie Devine signing from Wigan. We had our say on Bale. We had our say on Pierre-Emil Hoiberg. And we spoke about Hyun Min Son winning all mm. four awards at the end of Seamers and Wars. So mm -hmm. let me know in the comment section below what you thought about that. Thank you, John, for joining me. And as always, always come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.